All right, this is going to be a simple video on just how to get in the render settings and how to render out something. So we're just going to create a polygon primitive sphere. I'll scale it up so we can see what's going on with it. And um, so you all know how to move it around and you know how to see it in the viewport and you know how to move it, but you want to start producing an image that you can use you know another program you want to be able to save it as like a JPEG or something so alright well over here in the upper right hand corner we have up here on the toolbar up here above the shelf we have the little it looks like a clapboard that they use in film and movies it's the render thing render the current frame next to it is IPR which is what I showed in the other video which is a render that you can select an area and interactively change in real time what's going on in the render and the right of it is half of the clapboard with a couple little dots there is render settings the global settings and that's what we're uh, we're gonna go into that in just a second but for right now we're just gonna we're gonna look at what we have and we're just gonna render it like it is no lights or anything it has a default light in there there's our sphere and notice that it looks larger in the window in the camera than it does in the render it looks further away because we're not seeing an accurate focal length here yet like if I do this and you obviously notice that it, it's clipped off on the tops and bottoms and we rendered it it's completely in the frame in here it's not clipped off that's just because what we're seeing here in the viewport isn't exactly accurate because of all the menus and things stacked up. So when we want to get an accurate view of what is going to show up in the render, we'll go under this tab right here. It's in the viewport window. View, camera settings. Right now it says no gate. The gate is basically seeing exactly the gate that the, the film strip that you're seeing through the camera. So we want to see a resolution gate, the true resolution. And there it is. You can see it. It says 640 by 480. We'll get to that in a little bit about in the render settings, what that that's the size it's going to render at. And then the outline, the box. Now, if it's clipped off like this and we hit render, it's clipped off. If it's fitting like this, right in the center, that size, should have made it less polygons, huh? It is accurately in the box at the same size that it is in the box in here. Um, so resolution gate helps. If you don't want to see it anymore, go back to view, camera settings, and then no gate, and it goes off. And it's handy. I always use it. So we're going to just turn it back on for what I'm going to show you next. Also, if something's like to the left outside of this line here, I'm going to demonstrate how this gate is accurate. There you go. It's cut off at that edge. So it's whatever's inside of this. All right, on the third one from the right up here on these little render, the three render things, the regular render IPR and this, in the settings, we want to click on the settings. And then it opens up. We have three renderers in here. Well, actually, I have four going on right now. We have the Maya Software Renderer, which is just a default. It'll make you nice digital images that you can take into Photoshop. Maya Hardware, which we're not going to mess with. That's something for real-time rendering for games. Maya Vector, which we're not going to mess with either. And it actually makes, like, you can render out, like, Illustrator-style type vector artwork, line art, with a 3D object that looks like it's line art. And Mental Ray, which... It's kind of like the Maya software. It's a renderer, but it can get ultra realistic with the way. But it takes longer to render and stuff, so we're going to do just Maya software for now. And in the common tab, which all the renders are going to have, you have the file name prefix, which I never really put anything there. Um, frame animation extension. If you're going to render up multiple frames, then you would do the name, number, or whatever. Like if you're going to do an animation, but we're not. So we're just doing name single frame. You can do it without an extension, but we always usually do it with the extension in case we're going to a Mac. Name dot extension, single frame. Maya if it's IFF file, it's just 
a Maya file, but you have all these EPS, GIF, JPEG, PSD, PNG, all the file types that are common. We'll just go with JPEG. Camera, we're looking through, and you can see it down here in our resolution gate. That's a good thing about it, too. It shows you what can't we want to render out of the perspective. We want to render the RGB, although just the full color of it. It doesn't have any colors on it, but it's the full color of it. You can uncheck or check alpha channel. You can use the alpha channel later in Photoshop or Shake or After Effects or depth channel. We're not going to mess or check with that. Then you go down more and you have image size, 640 by 480, and it shows you up here in your resolution gate. It's a great thing, that gate. Go up to 1024. Now the gate shows you that aspect ratio up there. Um, just for speed's sake, we're going to stick with 640 by 480. Pixels. Resolution 72 is the screen display. Why not? We're not doing anything for print. And there's that did enable default light. If you put your own lighting in the scene, uncheck that. But since we don't have any other lighting in the scene, it's just going to produce light off the camera default. Those are all your settings. Resolution, size camera that you're rendering from, image format. We go over to the next tab, Maya Software, the specific tab for the renderer. Custom, the quality, custom, preview, intermediate, production. Production is usually good enough. Edge anti-aliasing, just smoothness of the edges or jaggedness. Just, you know, you go high quality, highest quality. Um, I don't mess with multi-pixel filtering. And I don't mess with any of these settings really down here in that either. So that's it. It's just a quality adjustment, and you can manually adjust them. So we have everything set the way we want. The size, the camera. We can close those render settings and render. I have some things running in the background, so it probably slows it down. And that's uh, that's it right there says 640 by 480 just there's no zoom on it it's one frame rendered from camera perspective and rendered in Maya software now you'll notice if I go down here and I change this to 1024 resolution and close that and render it we get a pretty large image now we start getting up into I think high def is 1280 by 1024 this isn't quite high def but it's very large, good, clear image quality. And it's taken a little bit longer. It's dependent on what you want to use your renders at, but you usually want to do them at the highest quality that you can afford to do in the time that you're allotted. And that just about fills the entire screen. But that's how you do the render settings. Um, those are your render global settings. And Maya software works for pretty much everything you need to render. And those are the attributes, and that's where you find it. Also over here in the tab where it's underneath File, Edit, Modify, there's a tab just underneath of it. It says Animation, Modeling, Dynamics, Rendering. You can go into that in the Rendering tab, and um, there are more options under here under the Render. You can, instead of clicking on the box over there, you could just click Render Current Frame right here. IPR render current frame, same thing. You can actually set do some render diagnostics, can test the resolution out. Batch render, which I'm not getting into right now, is actually how you do the animations. It batch render single frames and just one after the other. That's all an animation is, is hundreds of single frames. And um, that's it. And render using, you could pretty much select your render from in here. And that's about all you need to know to get to rendering.